So good afternoon, everyone. I am Sanjana, chairperson of IEEE Voice Train Branch WI Affinity Group, and vice chairperson of IEEE Voice Train Branch. Here with me, I have Shatoke Bunik, chairperson of IEEE Voice Train Branch, and Shakil Anwar, the general secretary of IEEE Voice Train Branch. Uh, we here. Uh, it is our honor to welcome all of you uh, to our today's session, uh, second tech talk of webinar series, fighting COVID-19 themed research and innovation challenges during COVID-19. It is jointly organized by IEEE IS WITSB chapter, IEEE EMB WITSB chapter, IEEE WITSB WIAG, IEEE WIS student branch, and IEEE Boundless section. So today, uh, let me introduce our moderator for today. Our moderator for today is Dr. Sila Shanas Ma'am. She is a senior member of IEEE and fellow of Engineers, uh, Institute of Engineers, Bangladesh. She's also the professor of Department of Tripoli, Buet, Bangladesh. She is a chairperson of IEEE Bangladesh section, advisor of IEEE IAS, Buet SB chapter, chairperson of IEEE IAS and EMBS Bangladesh chapter. Now let me introduce our speakers for today. We have here with us, Dr. Paulina Chan. She's a chairperson of Hong Kong section for, uh, 20, uh, Hong Kong session, session 2020, Principal and CEO of Global Mutual Innovation Consorti Consortium, Founding Chair, Imperial Women in World DSP, Chair, WI Hong Kong Section 2018-19. Dr. Paulina Chen is a chairperson of IEEE Hong Kong Section 2020, the Founding Chair of Imperial Women in World DSP, was Chair of IEEE WE 2019, Dr. Chan is also a Chartered Manager and CMI Companion on the Board of Trustees of the Chartered Management Institute UK and the Chairperson of the CMI Regional Board in Hong Kong. Dr. Paulina is Principal and CEO of Global Mutual Innovation Consortium, a think tank of multidisciplinary professionals and startups in multiple countries, which focuses on the translation and application of novel technologies in STEM and management into commercial pro products and services such as mobile communication networks, artificial intelligence and big data, smart cities and smart buildings, green energies and forward-looking healthcare. Over the years, more than 10 angel network collaborations and cloud funding entrepreneur ventures have been set up in various EU member states, Hong Kong and China. Dr. Chan was in, was in senior management in AT&T, Lucent Technologies in the US, ExxonMobil Corporation in New York, ICO Global, ICO Global Communications London and Beijing, and EU for Hungary. As founding champion in Imperial Col College London Mentoring Program, 2013 to present, Dr. Chen has contributed a lot of her time and energy to guide young scientists, technologists, engineers, and manage. <laughs> managers in training to develop career paths and personal growth. Our next speaker is Dr. Yarla Gada Padmasai, Professor and Head of Department of EC, DNRBJ IET, Dean Students Progression Chair, IEEE WI Hyderabad Section, Co Founder, Salisit Technologies Private Limited at BJ Hub. Dr. Y. Padmasai obtained her BTech degree from Nagarjuna University, Gandhar, ME in Systems and Signal Processing, and PhD in Biomedical Signal Processing from Osmania University, Hyderabad. She started her career as quality control engineer and served for five years in MS, Suchitra Electronics Private Limited, Hyderabad, from February 1991 to May 1996. Later worked as a lecturer in the Department of EC in Deccan College of Engineering and Technology, Hyderabad, from January 1998 to October 1998. Then worked in the same capacity in the Department of EC, BNR, BJ, IET, from okay. July 2000. Uh, July 1999 to 10th November 2000. She was then promoted as an associate professor in the same department of EC from 20th August. Later elevated as professor and took charge of head of the department from 1st September 2012 to till date. And also assigned additional responsibilities as Dean Students Progression from 1st April 2016 to till date. She is a senior member of IEEE, life member of ISTE, ISOI, ASCI, and fellow of IETE, IEI. I, Vice Chairperson for WI Affinity Group, I had IEEE Hyderabad Section Slate 2019, Member sh Short Term Training Program Committee, IET Hyderabad 2012-2014, Member Women Empowerment in Engineering Committee, IET 2014 and 2015, 
Executive Member ISTE AP Section from 2012-2014, and Secretary Come Treasurer IST, IST ETS Section from 2015-2019. She has presented and published 80 research papers in national and international conferences, journals. She is presently guiding six research scholars and one scholar awarded. Dr. Y. Padmasai areas of research interests are biomedical and image processing to create societal impact to add feather to her cap. She also received grants of worth 75 lakhs from various funding agencies like DST, DIT, UGC, and AICTE. And under her guidance, her research scholars submitted various proposals and got grants. Received Best Teacher Award from IST, AP, and TS section, shortlisted for research awards by UGC, and one of the recommended candidates for research award for the year by UGC New Delhi. She was appreciated by the United Invest Inventors Association of the USA for her innovative excellence. She has received silver medal and bronze medal for the project Cough and Wheeze Analyzer from IT Minister Dr. In Lokesh at Indian Innovators Association, AP and Innovation Society, and International Innovation Fair Association held at Vishakhapatnam and China, Association of Inventions, respectively. She was also sanctioned travel grants from ACRB of GST and UGC to participate in International Tele Mentoring Conference held in Nevada. Member of Institute Academic from 2008 to till date. Member of BOS, Member Academic Council from 2010 to till date. Chairman BOS from 2012 to till date in BNRBJIET and as Research Committee Member, BME College of Engineering. Osmania University. She involved actively in TEQIP and autonomous works and made best efforts to achieve accreditations like NBA and AAC for VNR BGT. Co founder of Celsius Technologies Private Limited at BJ Hub, published two patents by Indian Patent Office, one of the inventor of the patent and published by Indian Patent Office titled A Method and System for Analyzing Risk Associated with Respiratory Sound, another on brain computer interface based and method for characterizing behavior state of a subject. The patent has been published on to 2012-2019. Awarded gold medal by Korea International Women Invention Exposition, Exposition as Women Entrepreneur of Celsius Technologies Private Limited, received Uttama Acharya Puraskar National Award for Impact Creators in Engineering Education in Commemoration of 150th of Birth Anniversary Celebration of Mahatma Gandhi by Indian Server at VR Siddharth Engineering College, Vijayawada. Acted, acted as jury member of 4th edition of IIA International Innovation Fair organized in NSIC Exhibition Hall on 1st December 2019, Hyderabad. Presently, she is acting as chairperson for We Affinity Group, IEEE Hyderabad Section, late 2020. Thank you all, and uh, we, there will be a feedback form uh, given to you after the webinar session. Uh, please fill that up for e-certificate. Thank you. I would Thank like you. to ask our Thank moderators, ma'am, to please take over. Thank you, Sanjana. Uh, reading bio is not just reading bio. Actually, it is celebrating the contribution of a person. So whenever a bio is read, I, I really try to feel the hard work and spirit the person has done over the years. So I just want to feel it and try to match with my endeavors. And because we are all in the same boat, then I, we, we have to really feel each other. So I'm very proud to present Paulina Chen and Dr. Padma Sai. It is a great honor because I personally know them, but it was my dream to let them know to others whom they do not know. So that's the, uh, that's, that has been uh, always my uh, vision that creating the network, uh, sharing the resource to many people because, because I am connected to Paulina and I'm connected to Sai, but we have thousands of ambassadors in Region 10. So through a webinar and TikTok, we can connect to such accomplished people to our many ambassadors so that those ambassadors can feel and to can take you as a role model in their life. In that way, although you don't know them personally, but this virtual pandemic world has created an opportunity 
to know our role models, whether you are living in the same country, whether you are living in any part of the world. I should take this as an opportunity and you should take this as an opportunity. So our TED Talk webinar series, that IEEE Bangladesh section and our BUIT, that is the highest ranked engineering university in the country where I'm serving as a professor, that student runs. And there are two chapters, Industrial Application Society and Engineering Medicine Budget. These student branch technical chapters. Uh, we are an, our Women in Engineering Affinity Group. By the way, our Women in Engineering student branch, this student branch became the best one in the Asia Pacific and became the best one in the whole world. So it is uh, now chaired by Sanjana here. So it is a great honor that Sanjana, you are also leading this initiative and we are getting such a person like Paulina and Sai because they are our silent heroes. It is our job to connect them to the whole world, to create and to enhance the visibility of Region 10 volunteers to the whole world. I can see in the chat box, there are people from Region 8, from Iraq and from other countries. So it is a great honor, uh, Paulina, Pogna, uh, it is a great honor that we have received uh, your kind time, talent, and everything for today's seminar. Our purpose is research and innovation challenge during COVID-19. As Paulina is, has a huge experience from industry and Padda Sai has industry from academy and also connected to the industry. So our two technical student run chapters, Industrial Application Society and EMBA student run chapter, we are all blessed to have you. So without further delay, Padda Sai, if you don't mind, let us start with Paulina. Padda, what you say, what you say? There is no specific order. Uh, no problem. Thank you, ma'am. You please ask uh, Paulina, ma'am, to start. Thank you, Padda, for your, for, the, for your consent and support. Paulina, now floor is yours. Okay. Um, thank you, Professor Celia, and also um, Professor Panmaza. And uh, I am so blessed and, and, and so honored to be invited into this congregation of thought leaders, you know, and, and, and um, also uh, among young and forthcoming, you know, leaders of IEEE and also to the world. And, um, and more importantly, I must congratulate that I am among the top five of the student branches of the world of IEEE. And you know, this is so exciting and especially the growth rate for the, for the last 10 years. Just Bangladesh alone is 1000%. So this is what a role model and it is what an encouraging idea. It shows that, you know, um, students, young professionals are definitely our future and also from the Asia Pacific. So, so this is, you know, fantastic. Now, today I'm trying to share with you, you know, how um, do we um, in Hong Kong section empower students, young professional, and we to combat COVID-19 and embrace the new norm. Um, with a particular platform used in IEEE called Tri Engineering. Before I start that, may I also share with you that my PhD thesis is on teleconferencing. And, and, and at that time, you know, uh, we, we never know, you know, how um, flourish, you know, this technology can touch the world and how important it is that nowadays we have to deal and do business at home and from work without this tool. 
So yes. I can only encourage all of you, you know, across the regions, you know, um, region 10, region 9, and, and region 8, everywhere, to pursue in your vision. And sooner or later, you can see, you know, all these, you know, accomplishments. The next slide, please. Um, now, I would like to... Uh, to introduce, you know, some of the work that uh, IEEE Hong Kong does, you know, during the COVID period. Now, remember that we, Hong Kong, is, was one of the pioneers who experienced such a difficult experience, you know, as early as February and also even late January. So at that time, you know, we already, you know, had a, a lot of challenges to, to see how we could operate and how we could make use of the technology across sections and also across chapters, societies and affinity group um, to um, contribute using our ideas and technologies to support you know, um, the industries. You know, Hong Kong, you know, the industry in Hong Kong is finance, and, we be, and also we like to, we just started to be the cradle of innovation technologies for the Great Bay Area in China. And there are lots of talents, and among those, 4,000 of those are, are registered members of IEEE. And, and, and among all the 4,000 members, this is our objective to empower them, you know, especially women in engineer and technology, students and young professionals. How are we going to, um, to guide them, just like what, you know, uh, Professor Celia and also Professor Parasita uh, have done, you know, in your region um, to forward and translate, you know, our experience and um, advice, you know, to, to the growth. So, uh, so among those, we have chosen to use um, ver um, a very rich technology platform called Tri Engineering, you know, from IEEE. And we have also combined efforts of we, uh, combined efforts of education chapter, photonics chapter, and safety chapter in order to pursue. Out of so many things in terms of research and innovation challenges, I have chosen a few to discuss with you, and I hope, you know, it would enlighten each other and also generate, you know, more and more discussions. The next slide, please. Um, you know, the COVID ID is definitely a world crisis. It also has produced and put many, many opportunities, you know, for the development of engineering and technology and science. In the past, the very conventional way that engineering, technology, science is on our own. We are the scientists, we are the engineers, we are separate from the world, we are not businessmen, we are not uh, um, uh, medical professionals, provider, we are engineers and technologists and scientists. However, before we know it, be because of the special measures of the pandemic of, of the world and because of the, of the restriction of not able to work, you know, in a normal, on a, in a conventional way, telecommunications have played a very, very important role in everyone's life. You know, it is, and, and, and communications technology, engineering technology across all branches are not only for the engineers, it is for everybody. So it is so important that we must try to educate and enhance ourselves 
as engineers and scientists, as we, as and and also as men member of we, and we have quite a few. And may I say that the chair of we in Hong Kong is a male engineer. So we have to really promote and propagate, you know, the idea of STEM, the idea of applications of telecom technology and other technologies um, to everyone, to everybody every day. And it is not just communications. Communications is a platform. We would also add in all the medical electronics, uh, photonics, safety, educations, and so forth. Amongst those, I'd like to highlight three of the major pillars to make this happen. As we are all, you know, somehow, you know, taking um, social restrictions to be working from home and to and reduce in-person communications and meetings and so forth, the remote learning becomes, which is one of the tri engineering resources of IEEE, as you will know, uh, becomes a very essential tool to incorporate in a blended and remote learning to maintain social distancing for everybody in the COVID 19 era. This is across the board in industry in government, in all level of education, from primary, pre-university, university, and postgraduate studies. So remote learning, with, as you all know, I am preaching to the choir that we are all engineers and we are all scientists. You know the technology involved behind remote learning. And, and since when, we, 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 we have this opportunity to make full use of all these practices and be applicable to the whole society. The second pillar, you know, uh, of the um, uh, co uh, of co combating, you know, COVID-19 and embracing the new norm of COVID-19 is e-mentoring. You know that we all need mentors, as Professor Cecilia said. You know, she is obviously, you know, a very strong mentor, you know, uh, um, in the region. And, and so as uh, Professor Sai. Um, however, a lot of time we rely on uh, uh, in-person communication only. However, now we are restricted to that mode, and we have to expand ourselves, to extend ourselves, to touch wider and deeper into the population and also the availability of future leaders, uh, mentees, students, and young professionals. Now, this is a positive impact that all of us, like today, you know, um, just the transmission of our voice and our video, we are able to touch so many of you. And this is part of the e-mentoring process, I hope. And also remember e-mentoring is not a one-way street. It's not just from us to you. We also learn a lot, you know, from you to, uh, to, to all of us because a lot of your thoughts and a lot of your vision, um, a lot of your uh, uh, thinking are very important, you know, for us to understand and also together we build a vision. So this is uh, uh, a very important and a new mentoring also important to include many of the soft skill. Um, we know that we engineers and we scientists are very technical, uh, very factual, and very to the point. But a lot of times to communicate and convey our ideas 
to the stakeholders, they may or may not be in the same field of us. They are in industry of different types of different discipline. However, they need to have a good communications with us so that ideas can be exchanged and so that you know plans can be executed. So this is you know one pillar of of STEM education and STEAM education. Now, of course, you know, the world is full of uncertainty. And um, it is so important that, you know, we should see the local and the international issues as one. The world is so small, like the pandemic. I could not tell the difference between Hong Kong and Bangladesh and India and Singapore and, and the United States because we are all suffering the same crisis. And at the same time, we are, it is applicable for us to apply, you know, the same technologies, the same thoughts, and also the same resolutions so that together across discipline, it is not just engineering, it is not just electrical engineering, it is not just healthcare, it is across um, uh, the board to have a solution. So this is, you know, the three pillars we can see that using the platform of tri engineering can touch, you know, the world and, and the young professionals and the students to me are the key pillars to make this happen. The next slide, please. Now, then, um, then what, do, what have we done? We have done a lot of things, but I want to give you a capsule of um, what we have uh, organized, you know, um, in Hong Kong, you know, across various chapters um, to package, you know, um, uh, 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 to package a um, uh, diagnostic uh, 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 resolution, a awareness of COVID and how to embrace the new norm, you know, from our perspective. And this capsule is like a package that it is definitely useful um, in Hong Kong. And it is also our hope to include the rest with our neighboring sections and chapters in the regions and also across the world, you know, using the, v, the, using the V2 and, and also using the tri engineering resources to touch you know, the world and mainly, you know, focusing on engineering aspect and, and education aspect. First of all, um, we, we chose, you know, the among, you know, try engineering resources is very rich. You can all see that from the website. And we have identified one angle of them is from the nano waterproofing technology. And we are also using online lectures because we are restricted to do any in-person or face-to-face -face lecturing uh, to collaborate with industries, with um, universities, and also with schools uh, to talk about you know, the uh, introduction of nanomaterials and also to identify a, a scanning microscope using fiber op uh, using optics. So these are the uh, um, the technologies uh, we introduced, you know, to this capsule of embracing the new norm. And we also, you can see, you know, the lab, you know, uh, from you know the Hong Kong University that we choose, and they have provided a scanning microscope 
uh, developed, you know, from Stanford and, and also from Hong Kong University and to analyze and to diagnose, you know, the COVID-19 um, uh, virus and, 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 the, and, the, and the learners, you know, were able to see, you know, um, um, in an instance, the ins and outs, you know, of um, the virus, you know, through this optics scope, uh, microscope. And at the same time, we are choosing the waterproofing um, features of nanotechnology, which is currently being um, applied, you know, to high quality surgical mask being used in medical field and also for the healthcare provider. And um, uh, we also do virtual realities to visit all the laboratories with scanning microscope in Hong Kong. So that without going far, you know, at one in front of one's own, you know, uh, laptop, um, one could really understand, you know, um, the engineering, uh, the, the, to understand the COVID-19 virus from the engineering and scientific perspective. Next slide, please. Now, um, with all the, with all the um, understanding, um, we also, as I say, you know, this is, you know, uh, a matter of a new norm. In order to embrace a new norm, uh, it's a multidisciplinary new norm. It's a global norm. It's not local. It's not regional. It's not only uh, um, uh, engineering. It is all inclusive. Because look at that, the whole world, um, America, Asia, Europe, you know, uh, um, and, and the whole uh, whole seven continents are facing the same challenges and facing the same problems. So um, we we have um, used you know a very interesting um, um, graphics analysis and uh, from the Economist you know up to June to take a look because as I say we are looking into the nanomaterial of mask. You know, how would that compare um, to the standardized material? And also, even more dramatically, how would we compare to populations and countries um, before and after they have used mask coverage of the face and, the, and, the, and also uh, fighting off com com combating off the coronavirus 19 situation. And it is very interesting. Uh, like, let me take your, your, your focus to East Asia at the center. You know, Hong Kong, uh, China, um, uh, China is, uh, had a very early experience of this of, of the coronavirus and Hong Kong was the earlier uh, um, um, affected area uh, as early as in January. Forge and at that time, there were no other experience to the rest of the world, you know, how to um, face this, you know, from general public, you know, point of view. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, you know, 2003, Hong Kong and China has SARS problem, which is also one kind of coronavirus. Then the general public are very uh, are already used to and had the experience of using mask to cover the face in order to uh, combat against the virus. So you can see the percentage of using mask in China and Hong Kong is tremendously higher than many parts of the world or re, uh, and, and also the, uh, the significant reduction of infection. 
Fortunately, as time goes by, and we can see the gradual increase of effectiveness of and awareness of mask wearing, and you can see the gradual reduction of infection across the board. And, and what I say is part of the COVID uh, capsule of education using technology, using the analysis and from the lab, the virtual reality visits from the lab, and also the analysis of the nano material of the mask, um, we could identify and compare and contrast it's from the social aspect, you know, of mask covering. The next slide, please. Over here, I just want to give you an example. You know, uh, there are many kinds of masks available, you know, in, in, um, uh, uh, in the society. And we can see, um, ah, sorry, uh, we can see that uh, we would uh, definitely, you know, choose the right standard and, and for doing so. And the next slide, you can, the next slide, the next slide, please. The next slide identify the use of um, masks in, um, uh, um, in the daily infection, you know, um, uh, in areas, you know, outside New York, you know, as an example, and how the nano mask, you know, with the nanotechnology um, filter the water particles with COVID-19. Um, this is um, something we can do, you know, from the virtual reality microscope in order to come up with this, with this analysis. The next slide, please. Um, in, then the next thing is how are we going to measure, you know, uh, when we combat COVID ID from the technical perspective and also to embrace the new norm uh, and also the new normal. We have chosen to use the UNESCO sustainable development goals, you know, to make things to, as a metrics. And um, of course, you know, criteria number three is for wellness and also good health among the rest of the 16 criteria have been used to, as our goal to measure the effectiveness, you know, of, you know, this capsule of of using um, the um, COVID-19 te uh, uh, technology uh, from the engineering and science perspective, including the social aspect of metrics evaluation. The next slide, please. To recap, um, um, uh, what we have done, you know, uh, to, and also to share with you today is to empower, you know, all the diversified learners in Hong Kong across chapter sections, you know, all ages from school students to professional across business sectors, industries. Um, with the use of tri-engineering technology tools to combat COVID-19 and to embrace the new norm. Uh, the technology involved um, the virtual and uh, extended reality. Uh, we use um, the uh, uh, distance and virtual uh, learning and also we, we also Im Im implement many soft skills in order to, to convey our ideas across so to all stakeholders. So together, you know, we'll work together to embrace the new norm. The next slide.
you know, uh, on top of that, you know, um, we also um, organized a COVID-19 webinar as early as late February. We have invited experts, you know, from um, Imperial College London. You know, they were one of the few uh, uh, um, uh, colleges, you know, to organize, you know, and also do the modeling, you know, of COVID-19. And also we invited, you know, um, uh, Hong Kong University uh, um, uh, professors, as well as Columbia universities, you know, to help us, you know, communicate the early ideas. So this is, uh, this is taking longer, but I thank you for your time listening. And I look forward to have the interaction with you, you know, later. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Paulina, for sharing your the COVID-19 initiative. Actually, it is very interesting to use this STRI engineering thing. I will request every one of you to visit the STRI engineering website and see how you can use it to fight COVID-19. Uh, because uh, in our industrial application society, signal processing society, and uh, computational intelligence society, and also, I should say, I should, uh, that engineering medicine biology society, these are all interdisciplinary area. So using the virtual reality, trying to feel what is happening in the visit, this is a kind of industry visit. At the same time, uh, you can know how you are handling COVID-19 and analyzing the nanomaterials for your face and other items. And that is very important where involvement of women, students, and young professional are very, very effective because so that they can involve themselves in producing so such materials. So in, so in industry, then we'll have a huge younger generation collaboration because we really need them in huge numbers. And industry may not have sufficient expert. Here is the role of IEEE students, young professional women in engineering that apply the tri engineering knowledge and feel yourself become part of it and acquire the required skill so that you can help the production process. Actually, that is the ultimate goal, right, Paulina? Absolutely, most valuable. Mm. Yes. We have to, uh, it's it not just a participation. For me, it is a skill development program. So I hope you will, uh, you, will, uh, you will see and you, will, uh, you have already observed the experiences that Paulina share and you will search it and you will be part of it. If you have any question, then put in the chat box. So before going to the, and we'll be coming back to the question and succession, so, afterwards but because at this moment i don't see any question in the chat box that's why i have summarized the contribution of the presentation that paulina has shared with us so that you can really fit yourself into it it is not something what is happening in hong kong it is something that you can every person in the world can relate to it because every person is now within the pandemic although we are looking like we are we are dressed we are in front of the internet connectivity but actually we are all passing through this pandemic but we are mentally determined to utilize this crisis and we want to transform this crisis into power of knowledge sharing so that we can contribute as a technologist. We are not the first responder like Red Cross. We are the second level responder. And as a second level responder, it is our job to apply our knowledge and to employ our knowledge, to deploy our knowledge so that we can really help the COVID-19 affected generation by our technology. So that is the summary of the 
um, uh, presentation what Paulina Chan has uh, shared with you so that after my summary, you will find some avenues or points to direct some question in the chat box. So Sanjana and uh, Shartoki, uh, before at this moment, I can see we have 80 participants and I have checked the yes, chat box. We have people from almost everywhere, Sri Lanka, um, uh, Pakistan, India, many states of India. That is the important thing. We have to we have to attract the root level volunteers because we really don't know. They are so potential. So we have to connect with them. I can see in many places of Bhutan, many places of India, Pakistan, Iraq, and many other places. Please forgive me if I could not mention that same. Then we are ready to listen to Padda Sai. Padda is a researcher in also biomedical signal processing. Hello, Padda. Can we hear you? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. We are ready. Floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. So, ma'am, uh, can uh, is it possible to share PPT? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, do you want to share your own PPT, ma'am, or uh, should we share? Yes. Should we? I have to share it for you. Or? It's okay. Who is doing it? Padda is doing it, right? Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, I have shared it. Uh, do you okay. want? Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Celia Sahnaj, ma'am, Chair IEEE Bangladesh Section, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I follow um, my Co-speaker, uh, Dr. Paul Yia Chan, Chairperson, Hong Kong section. So ma'am has enlightened various uh, situations, how we have to tackle during COVID-19 time. So uh, before going into research area, I want to highlight some of the key points. This is members of IEEE uh, WIAG, all the team uh, who are organizing various events at section level. Uh, from uh, January to up to now, we have organized 23 various events to enlighten young engineers. So because of this pandemic situations, many of the students, they are taking uh, about uh, thinking about future, what happened uh, um, in future, whether we will get job or not. So for uh, motivating them, we have organized many events during this time. So we invited uh, Shahana's madam also once. She has enlightened all our uh, members, not only student members, all professional members also, they are worrying about whether their job is in safe hands or whether it will go. Everybody, every human being in the world are suffering with this COVID-19. So we should get ready for these challenges. So before going into details, I want to tell about some of the few points about technical education, how it is shaping uh, in, in the entire world. Actually, technical education is the most vital parameter for human, so human resource development with great potential for addition of values to product and services, thus facilitating improvement in national economy and enhancement in quality of life of the people. In January 6th of 1927, the first commercial transatlantic telephone service was inaugurated between the cities of New York and London. Exactly 89 years before that, that is on January 6th of 1838, Samuel Morse and Alfred gave their first public demonstration of their electronic telegraph system in New Jersey, USA. Just imagine how the world has changed since then. Today in 2020, we are effort to look into the future of computing and communications. Thanks to hundred, hundreds of such scientists and policy makers who have contributed to the advancement of science and technology. The first industrial revolution used water and steam power to mechanize production. The second used electronic power to create mass production. The third used 
electronics and information technology to automate production. Now, a fourth industrial revolution is building on the third, the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of the last century. It is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, biological spheres. In the industry for age that we now are in, technical education is transforming considerably. The clear demarcations in engineering education are no more distinctive. We are now moving to an integrative education paradigm. AI, machine learning, cyber security, IoT, telematics, autonomous vehicles, data analytics, and the combination of two or more of these technologies sometimes are of prime importance today. Technical education must adapt itself to prepare our young learners and practitioners for tomorrow. And such preparedness requires cross-disciplinary teaching and learning. Today's graduates are also expected to possess communication skills, interpersonal skills, including the ability to work in multidisciplinary teams, while also keeping with the constant advances of technology. So men and engineering have been achievers for over a century now. In the late 19th century, women were not allowed to graduate with a degree in engineering. While the Second World War provided many women opportunities to become engineers. Women were not admitted in engineering until even in the 1970s in many countries. Even today, many so-called advanced countries have less than 15% of women in engineering. In India, if you consider all these statistics, the situation is actually better, but the work-life balance suffers a lot for women. Also, due to our socio-culture conditions and family-based societal systems we have in India. Today, women are multi-faceted, super mom, wife, or a career woman. How to make a balance? This is a question that comes up to almost all women who seek work-life balance, but actually have no idea how to tackle all these difficulties of their messy lives. They are likely to get stressed while striking a balance between multiple roles that they are required to do, which result in occupational stress. Occupational stress in case of women results from adverse working conditions. Stress at work can cause major damage to one's health and overall lifestyle. And it is an area that should not be ignored. Identifying the problems of women employees related to work-life balance is the need of our few Excuse suggestions. Me. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, could you please tell me in which slide you are in so I can... Actually, first it. slide only, I am explaining all these things. So before okay. going further... Uh, so, uh, Should uh, I then present uh, the first slide only? Uh, after that, you go to next slide. Please uh, go to next slide. This one? Yeah, so already all of you mentioned uh, my journey. Okay. Um, so even though I, I also born and brought up in the village only. So even though we born and brought up nowadays many children, so they will uh, compare all the time. So uh, compare with the city children. Even though you're having intention to learn, so it, it won't be demarcation whether you're born in the village, even though you're having all the facilities or not. All those things depends on you, how we are taking the time, how we are contributing, how we are learning. All those things are very, very, very important. Even though you're born at the village or you're born in the city, even though you're born in the city, if you are not using properly uh, time and properly, you know, not taking care of all these things, all the how technology is advancing. So you, you can uh, be back of others. So uh, even though I uh, already I mentioned, so even though I joined at VNR 1999, 
even the before that some members joined so still they are back of me whatever already shahnaz madam mentioned so whatever role we are taking so we have to take it seriously we have to do justice what we are doing so we have to see whether uh, anything is going in positive direction or not so all the time whatever we are doing we have to take uh, things and look into surroundings whether we are traveling in good direction or we are not taking so in a good direction we have to take suggestion from elders so wherever we are having problem try to approach already uh, shan madam mentioned the importance of mentoring so mentoring is very crucial role in everybody's role whether uh, you are, whether you are a student whether you are a professor um, whether you are a, uh, a teacher everybody is should have one role model in their life so so that so wherever we are having any issue try we should be able to communicate to them so so that so they will give good guidance so based on that guidance we can uh, reach our goals and so all the things one more important point is whenever you are having any birthday so instead of celebrating your birthday you plan your birthday what you want to do by the time your next birthday is coming you plan accordingly so what are your uh, goals so whenever you are in uh, student if you are student so you make two goals what is the, your short term goal what is your long term goal so you whenever you are student by the time you are leaving your college you should reach your goal short term goal but you should not compromise your your short term goal by the time you are reaching your 25 or 28 you should reach your final goal you should not compromise in between for your short term goal that is very very important point whenever you want to reach your heights now please go to next slide please go to next slide so this is uh, uh, my professional uh, memberships i am active in all professional societies wherever i am having opportunity so i used to attend and i will uh, whatever we are learning now everybody is talking about in industry for technologies suppose if we want to sit in front of uh, taking book and reading it takes one year or two years to become master in technology suppose if we are having eminent speakers are available so whenever you are networking along with them and listening to uh, in, in india we are having good opportunity nbtel videos coursera videos edx videos uh, throughout country all those facilities are available so suppose all the students even though that is not included in your curriculum or not whenever you are leaving your institute you should be able to talk about this industry for technologies so if you are unable to talk about them what happen whoever is expert in that so they will lead you so for avoiding all those for problems whenever you are in your institute try to be become master in whatever you like whether if you are good in uh, signal processing you take signal processing as your prime uh, research area suppose if you are in master in uh, machine learning you take that so but you should take two or three subjects which is not included in your curriculum and uh, take it uh, at higher level and one more important point is so whatever you are learning i always advise to all the students first two years in your engineering is crucial in your entire life why because whatever we are learning so now everybody is talking about machine learning deep learning all those things but if you are good in mathematics and good in signal processing actually uh, all those concepts whatever that are included in machine learning and deep learning all those concepts are included in your second year level itself now everybody is struggling about mean square error all those things that is part of your signals and system subject okay i request all the students if you are having any issues in understanding of subjects uh, not only engineering subject all basic sciences now shan madam mentioned about uh, nanotechnology that is included in your chemistry you should not take one subject is important one is not important all are equally important fundamentals are very very important if you want to become expert in your career 
if you want to construct any building without foundation it is not possible to construct so in similar fashion suppose if you are having good concepts of all subjects up to second year whatever subject you come across in your life you can handle it easily so uh, in my case whatever i am teaching now at my institute actually i passed out from nagarjun university in 89 whatever i am teaching now those subjects are not included in my curriculum but even then i am able to teach my students with confident because of whatever concepts i learned there only so i i, I advise all of you please learn including mathematics if you are good in mathematics all computer programming is very easy whether it may be data structures whether it may be c language python whatever subject it is coming across in your career all those subjects you can learn with very easily suppose if you are having any problem in understanding basic subjects now this is the right time because of covid 19 you are having lot of free time is available so please make use your teachers are all the time available you can connect them by using our digital technology reach them wherever you are having problem try to figure it out and try to uh, rectify that problem don't uh, increase your problem so that you uh, after your uh, engineering degree no teacher will be available to teach whenever you are joining any industry what happen no teacher will be there they will give you some technology and ask them to implement you have to learn by yourself i will give one more example uh, from our, uh, our alumni actually he has when he placed in tcs they have assigned one project he is very smart boy in between his project some of the team member from other project left so because of capability he is having they have assigned that project to him that boy within 7 days he learned dot net 7 days he is master of dot net within 7 days so you should have habit of learning by your own that is very very important when you are student so if you are having such habit if you are practicing all those habits in your college if you go for industry or if you go for any uh, if you go for teaching profession also so you don't have any problem so i request all of you please make a habit of learning by your own so that is also one of the important point so I, i by using all these professional so memberships wherever i am having opportunity to listen to eminent speakers i never miss that opportunity so so that i can learn from elders so all those uh, things whatever advice they are providing to me i will educate all my students so uh, that is advantage as a hod so i can guide my students in good direction so this uh, please go to next slide please uh, please so this is uh, um, actually this this is regarding uh, covid 19 research so i will uh, tell uh, how we have to do research and any teacher and student research is not different teaching is not different and uh, only reading subject both are part and parcel of life okay as a student all the time you have to look around uh, suppose uh, if light is invented initially if you think that light is only one form now you can imagine how many forms are lights are available not only light if you see refrigerator if you see air condition how many forms of innovation came even though innov innovation it won't come differently even though it is existing how can you develop the same product that suits your surrounding even though iphone is available in usa many people in our surrounding area they can't afford that cell phone how can you develop the same cell phone uh, having iphone features that suits to our surrounding people with less cost suppose i cost iphone is costing 70000 suppose if you are developing the same cell phone with 5000 or 6000 many of our people will buy that one so that is nothing but one innovation even the existing product 
we are innovating the same product but that product is suitable to our our needs that is innovation In, so you have to whenever you are going to uh, uh, agriculture field whenever you are visiting to hospitals whenever you are traveling in public transport whenever you are visiting public toilets as a engineer how can we change the lives of our own people only you see our surroundings so even though all those facilities are available in advanced countries but our country can't effort that much money so we have to think our own people how can we solve our own problems so so that innovation comes okay this is also one of the innovation what we have done is actually i should thank uh, daiti initially we got fund from ministry of information and technology and electronics um, uh, now in india we are calling that as mighty we got i uh, actually i am the principal investigator for that project i along with triple uh, it hyderabad so we have done this project uh, our role is acoustic signal processing uh, so during that time we have chosen uh, a speech signal as one of the signal uh, to develop this product so actually we have identified that problem even though now covid 19 it came recently but many people are before prior to covid 19 also many people are suffering with uh, tb actually because of lung diseases many people are suffering across the world uh, now covid also uh, one of the victim so before that also many people are already madam mentioned sars okay so uh, for solving that problem we have taken Uh, that problem cough and wheeze analyzer so not actually initially we have done this an entire analysis by considering our speech data we have collected speech signal from patients suffering with pneumonia tb any uh, lung diseases actually by using our speech signal we can identify 24 diseases so we have done that project and uh, actually we have filed patent in india we got patent also published and granted patent we have applied that patent in usa and canada also and now we have integrated our patent we are closely working with apollo hyderabad apollo actually one of the primary uh, hospital in india it is having many branches across country and uh, so we are closely working with apollo hospitals actually we are having many opportunities in medical field uh, all as a engineer we can do lot of miracles by collaborating with hospitals at present actually i did my phd in biomedical area during that time also i collaborated with nims hyderabad um, that time onwards i am having lot of passion to solve um, healthcare problems uh, and even though that equipments are available in outside india but many rural india can't buy that equipment so my aim is as a, i am also belongs to rural india i want to develop some product and all rural village should not suffer with tb pneumonia and now now at present every person is suffering with covid 19 many people public and they are afraid of covid 19 so what we did is so by using only by using our mobile phone we can capture actually i have i have kept these links in that link you can test whether you are having cough and or not so in front of your mobile you can test your cough sound whenever you are uh, you can test it is giving direction whether we are having any problem or not so even though in rural village uh, so this app is uh, government of india also they kept in their website and uh, we can uh, integrate uh, we have integrated to apollo hyderabad so this is uh, by using this one only what we have to do is already we have integrated lot of ai and deep learning algorithms are done by using speech signal so whenever that your speech signal is 
uh, integrated to your app so it is giving it is uh, able to separate your cough sound and uh, speech data so based on that data it is giving whether you are having any problem it is giving direction we are not giving we are not at all replacing doctor only we are providing so guidance to rural india so that so uh, initial at initial stage if they approach doctor they can uh, they don't have any problem of either covid 19 or tb or pneumonia any disease can be uh, identified at initial stage whenever any disease lung disease is identified at early stage we can solve we can cure without any problem that is our main aim so so part of that we have started salicid technologies that is incubated at our college we are having a vj hub at our vnr vigyan jyoti institute of engineering and technology there itself we have incubated and we got grant from bayrak big 50000 50 lakhs to further evaluate our product so with that grant only we should thank bayrak big and for providing 50 lakhs so because of that only we have lot of money wherever whenever we want to approach doctor for validating our data whatever we are doing so whenever it is medical equipment it should be validated thoroughly our product is validated more than one year before covid 19 came into uh, actually it is initially in uh, 2019 september first case is identified uh, before that we are uh, we our product is um, we are testing with apollo we have released recently so this product into the market only whether we are not it is not commercialized only whether we are giving direction to the all the people around us so whether anybody is having symptoms of uh, any lung disease or not for validating only we are using this so uh, even though you are having intention to do something <coughs> sorry for that <coughs> all governments whether it is indian government whether it is bangladesh government hong kong us china all governments are encouraging young brains young brains are having more talent all of you please make use of the funds that are available with your government so instead of going for taking for all when we are young so everybody is encouraging to go for job only at the time that you go for government job why because security now Uh, so now uh, up to few years back so in our college also we encourage the students to go for job but now we are encouraging all students to you go for startup why because you are having lot of opportunities to start your own startup now if you take all medical whenever you are visiting any hospitals all medical equipments most of the equipment we are importing from either korea or from china or are from uh, germany so if you take any medical equipment it is costing from four to me the uh, the participants who are not speaking please host please mute the participants okay that is very expensive all equipment whatever suppose if you want to take ct scan that is available but what is the cost of whenever you are next time visiting hospital so please think in the direction what is the cost of that equipment as electronics engineer or any engineer <coughs> it is not possible only electronics engineer all multidisciplinary engineers should come together along with doctors and uh, develop our own products so that the cost of the equipment become very very less so i request all of you please so whenever you are visiting any place now onwards you think critically think differently so whenever you are thinking that is nothing but innovation even though it is don't bother whether you are having all many innovations are available so you take already pay, many patents are available so once it goes on if you are having one fashion about one technology 
you read it goes on reading different patents are available in open okay whenever any patent is published it is kept open okay uh, read that patents so so you contribute that patent delta x different so then that is innovation innovation won't come separately so like that all of you please think critically so and uh, you observe surroundings and whenever you are uh, seeing your parents so um, actually some of the many now also we are having many problems so how can you solve in uh, now also some innovations are coming any person is suffering with uh, any spinal problem so they can't uh, yeah, sit more, more time they can't stand they can't walk okay so as engineers what what solution we can provide okay like that as you grow world so sometimes we we'll, uh, we can't remember your names when we are young i used to remember entire class even though 10 years or i will call by their names now i can't remember that many number of names as we grow world all these problems as engineers how can you solve all these problems okay now many people are suffering with epilepsy and some people are suffering with uh, they can't sleep as uh, they can't uh, uh, excessive sleep okay many such problems are there and covid 19 it is giving good platform even though actually this is a bad now i i uh, i used to address all the students now you should not be afraid of that one always you see how doctors police and the municipalities uh, workers how they are working they are directly face, facing covid 19 patients but we are not touching them daily they are touching and saving lot of people around the world but we are not touching and we are afraid of them but we should not afraid as engineer we should come out of that already made a mention because of uh, protecting ourselves it won't affect if you properly protect yourself by keeping mask okay uh, instead of touching all object wherever you are going by proper protection you can save ourselves okay as as doctors and uh, police and municipal workers are able to uh, survive why can't we we can also survive nothing will happen only death rate is very very less so in sars already madam mentioned about sars that that time death rate is high compared to this okay so many such problems will come but we should be able to tackle all these problems with ease okay so we should not afraid of all these problems we should have courage how to tackle how to come up with solution this is very very important in life i request all the participants whether it may be teacher whether it may be student okay we should motivate children they should not worry about their jobs so you are having lot of opportunity Uh, so now previously before covid 19 even though you are having uh, zoom uh, microsoft teams all these technologies are available webex but we never used these technologies whenever we are having any conference we used to travel from one place to another place but now all of you are accustomed to these technologies okay so now you are having lot of opportunities in digital technologies so try to explore as a engineer how can you make use of these opportunities wherever you are having strong fundamentals wherever you want to innovate something make use of that uh, explore and try to excel so and i already mentioned so especially for women you are having lot of uh, um, uh, problems you have to balance work as well as uh, your home you have to take care of your family members that is first priority and the same time you should not uh, uh, deviate your uh, workplace both are very very important so because of that i want to give few suggestions stress free exercise everybody is now, now entire world is uh, uh, practicing yoga and meditation irrespective of our caste and uh, religion so every human being should practice yoga and meditation okay now prioritize the things that will help us in harmony both personally and professionally learn to say no to unwanted matters 
actually because of that uh, many girl students nowadays uh, uh, we are able to see cyber crimes okay you should be all girl students should be careful about all those things so whenever even if you are not uh, you, uh, you should be courage you should be able to say no so whenever you don't like you should not uh, deviate so you should have a lot of courage and be flexible in adjusting the day schedule so always you should plan and uh, you should uh, adjust you should be and one more important point is the financial management also important think brave while in our situations uh, covid 19 is one of the such situation you should be brave okay you should take it positive so for a tackling such problem the fragrance of flower spreads only in the direction of wind but the goodness of the person spreads in all the directions so next slide please so, uh, this is also recently apollo hospital released our uh, product uh, you, all of you can uh, check so it is free of cost so please all of you already i have link uh, shared that link so please go through that one so before signing off now i thank uh, Shale, dr shelia sahnaj ma'am for giving me this opportunity so i thank all the participants without your participation this event won't be successful i thank all of you for patiently listening to my talk thank you ma'am thank you one and all thank you ma'am Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, uh, Dr. Paulina Chan, ma'am, and Dr. Padmasai, ma'am. We really uh, enjoyed your presentation. I, I, and I hope our participants have too. Uh, Dr. Sila Shanas, ma'am, had to leave five minutes uh, before because of uh, very urgent work. She called me and say, said, "So uh, I'd like to open the floor to the participants. If uh, they have any questions, uh, they want to ask to the speakers." you can ask them. Uh, if, you have, if you have any questions, then you can ask the speakers or uh, otherwise uh, we'll just summarize all the questions and then send to the uh, speakers. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my question, I am Navid Ali, IEEE Ross student, Biran chapter, Synth. Care for Pakistan, and my question is: If we have a new idea for uh, business or the new innovation idea, can uh, is any organization which support the student for new uh, new invention? Ah, uh, can I can I ask you? Yeah, actually, yes. all governments are supporting all innovations. first whenever you are having any idea you suppose you check first patent search whether it is available or not you have to see all indian patent search you belongs to pakistan pakistan patent search us canada so now first you file patent before publishing to someone first you file your idea that is very very important many things we are doing but we are not aware of filing patent so before sharing your idea to someone so first you go through patent search okay you find your idea is novel then you file patent then you afterwards you approach someone without filing patent please don't approach suppose they as what happen instead of uh, uh, your idea they will uh, there is chance of taking your idea so for avoiding such problems so first file patent if you you if you feel that is innovative how will you know whether it is innovative or not you have to read patent patent search it is open uh, it is openly available to all members so please go through that and uh, wherever whatever area you are working on that you please do that all governments 
throughout the world are supporting student innovative ideas. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to uh, respond, you know, in general about, you know, innovative ideas. You know, um, innovative is a very interesting term. Um, uh, um, uh, many of you, you know, have great ideas, but the important thing is how to present them. And I think uh, prof Professor already said that, you know, you file a pattern, you write it down, you make sure that you are protected. Um, this is very important. And also, it should come up with a plan. Sometimes, you know, a lot of technology, technical ideas are not easily understood, you know, by people who file, you know, the funding, you know, and to support you. So all of us need to learn, you know, as they put it, you know, soft skill, and also need to be aware of, you know, a product plan or a business plan. So it would come very closely, you know, with your ideas. So, so um, uh, please don't ignore, you know, this part, you know, eventually, you know, um, it may go to the industry, may, may go to applications. And of course, you know, many of your innovation could be pure research also. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for, uh, for your beautiful answer, how, to, how students can protect their intellectual property, their innovation is quite an important thing uh, to learn uh, for students. So if, uh, any more questions for the speakers? Uh, well, uh, ma'am, ma we have in the chat box, people are saying it was a very good session. And in the feedback from, we are also collecting feedback, feedback from, uh, feedbacks from the students. And they're all very uh, thanking yeah, you, both of you, for this wonderful presentation. So if there is no more question, we can perhaps end today's webinar, because uh, it's been quite a long.